Jesus said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. Please still. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Defend and amend your life. Amen. Stand. Lord be with you. Lord, Lord, they spring from on high. Bring us to your sure mercy, as certain as the dawn, through the day star shining in our hearts. Even your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns together with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Matthew chapter 24. Glory to you, Lord. 
And early in the morning, the walls of Jericho fell. In Gideon, it's the same story. Early in the morning, the soldiers woke up and attacked the Midianites. The resurrection itself, it says that early in the morning, on the first day of the week, the Lord rose. Good things happen early at sunrise. Good things happen at dawn. Good things happen at day spring. Another passage which can be referred to in regard to this dawning of a new day. A day of light and not dark. It's in Hosea chapter 6. This is often read at Easter time also, but it certainly fits in in the sixth day of Advent. In Hosea chapter 6, verses 1 to 3, it reads, Come, let us return to the Lord, for he has torn us, but he will heal us. He has wounded us, but he will bandage us. The Lord is tearing us and wounding us. That's darkness. That's not something you want to be a part of. He said, Lord, deliver us. But he promises, I will heal you. I will bandage you. Then he says he will revive us after two days. He will raise us up on the third day that we might live before him. No longer in death, no longer in darkness, but in light, in light. So let us know. Let us press on to know the Lord. Does that sound familiar to anybody? Press on to know the Lord, to know him, make him known. Now how do we know him? His going forth is as certain as the dawn. And he will come to us like the rain, like the spring rain, watering the earth. When Hosea talks about the dawn, being certain, being sure, the dawn will come. Yes, the darkness is there. But he said it's certain that the dawn will follow. And he says his coming forth is like that dawn. When he's talking about his coming forth, he uses the same word that the prophet Micah uses in another famous uh, messianic scripture when he says you Bethlehem out of you will come forth a ruler a shepherd to rule my people Israel he uses the same word they're talking about the same one they're talking about the Messiah because Hosea and Micah were contemporaries they ministered in the same place at the same time they knew each other's works they knew each other's prophecies and they were both using the same thing and Hosea says I'll use the same word that Micah used to talk about the Messiah and they were both talking about something that the psalmist had prophesied long before in Psalm 19, which we read. It talks about the sun going forth like a bridegroom. Who's the bridegroom? Christ is the bridegroom. And the sun in Psalm 19 is a symbol of Christ. It says as he goes forth from one end of the heavens to the other, he brings forth a new dawn from one end to the other. Just like what... Uh, just like what Jesus said in the gospel reading. When I come again, said it's like lightning from one end of the earth to the other. Referring back to Psalm. Referring back to Hosea. Referring back even to Micah. It's that coming forth from one end of the heavens, from the east to the west. That's the coming of Christ. That's the coming of the dawn. The coming of the Messiah. The coming of the new day. But now why does Zechariah in the old version say day spring? This is something that, like I said, the new version just say sunrise or dawn and it misses something the word spring there is important when he says day spring when you think of spring you think of something that happens fast when you spring into action right you do something quickly day spring is something that happens fast when we see the day the dawn here it takes a long time in much of the world the daytime takes a long time to come forth First, you see a little bit of glow, maybe, in the eastern sky. In the, the total darkness, a slight glow of light. Then the glow gets a little bit bigger. And it takes a long time. Then maybe you see the very tip of the sun come over the horizon. Again, it's not very bright. Just kind of maybe a color, but not much light. Then slowly, 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 it rises. It only really takes quite a few minutes for the entire dawn to happen. But there was a, a, a Scottish missionary. His name was... George M. Mackey. This was back over 100 years ago. And he had spent his whole life as a missionary in Palestine. One of his last acts was to write a book about life in, the, in Palestine back then. It was called Bible Manners and Customs. And he described a, a sunrise in Palestine. He said, in Palestine, the sun doesn't take a long time to rise. It's almost instantaneous. One minute it's dark, the next minute you see a little light, and before you know it, 
You see the shadows dispelling before your eyes. You just see the shadows running away as the sun comes up over the horizon. And in seconds, it goes from dark to light. That's why they use the word day spring. And that's why prophetically he's saying in the middle of the darkness, in the middle of the gloom, it won't take a long time for the Lord to bring forth his light. The day spring is just that. It's a spring into deliverance, a spring into the dispelling of darkness, a spring into the light of God. And this is what the coming of Christ is. The coming of Christ 2,000 years ago and the coming of Christ in our lives. And I just want to say a couple of more things about dawn and darkness. In our culture, in our day today, the, uh, the day begins at midnight, right? At midnight, one day ends, and the next day begins. At midnight, last night, uh, a little over five hours ago, Wednesday ended, Thursday began. That's pretty much the way all over the world. But that wasn't the way it was in the culture of the Bible. The day began at evening. And when we say evening, we don't mean when it's already dark. Like when we think of evening, the lights are on and it's all dark and we're eating our dinner or whatever. Evening then, then around 3 o'clock, it was the time when the sun just began to go down. That's when they had their evening sacrifice. It wasn't at 6 or 8 or 9. It was about 3, what we would call afternoon. It's still light, but it's just beginning to get dark. So in other words, the day ends when it's still light. And a new day begins when it's still light. And shortly after the day begins, it gets dark. It goes dark for how many ever hours? And then, in the middle of what we call the day, the sun comes up, the day spring, and it's light for the rest of the time. In other words, the day doesn't begin in darkness, and the day does not end in darkness. What this tells us is, if you're walking in darkness now, if you feel like your life is full of darkness and gloom, that's not the beginning, and that is certainly not the end. Because the day spring will rise in your hearts, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all flesh will see it together. The darkness is not the end, the beginning of anything, and it's certainly not the end of anything. That's something that we can understand. The darkness will not last. Because the dawn, as Hosea said, is certain. It's as certain as the coming of Christ. The coming of Christ is as certain as the dawn. And the last thing that will happen will not be darkness. The last thing will be dawn. It says in Revelation 21, there will come a time when there will be no more night. There will be no more day. There will be no more sun. There will be no more noon. No more moon. What will there be? There will be light, not darkness. Darkness will be banished. Darkness will be abolished. Darkness will be no more. In Revelation 22, it also says, all those things will be gone. There will never be night there in the kingdom of God, in that place. No more night. Because no day ever starts with darkness. No day ever ends with darkness. It always begins with the light. Darkness may come our way on our journey. But in the end, there will be light because the dawn, the day spring is certain. And you'll be surprised sometimes how fast it happens. That's why it's called day spring and not dawn. That's why the prophet said the day spring will arise. That's why Zechariah said that day spring will come to us to put an end to the shadow of death. That's what the people were crying for for so many years, centuries, millennia. Bring us that day spring that immediate coming, that immediate abolishing of death. That's just what Jesus did, as Hosea said, on that third day. Rose us, brought us out of darkness. So this morning, we'll recognize this after a while. We'll get that slow dawning. Remember, in God, it's a spring. It's a day spring. It's a quick work. Like it says in Isaiah, it'll, it'll be a fast work, a quick work, an unusual work. It won't take a long time. That's the way God can work in our lives sometimes. That's the way light is. Light doesn't take a long time. When you turn the switch, it doesn't slowly come on. It's there. This is the hope of Israel. That's what they were crying for, asking the Lord for. Lord, bring us that day spring. And that's what the Lord did when he brought us the Lord Jesus Christ. That event which we celebrate a couple of evenings from now. So, as the song says, rejoice. Rejoice, O Israel, 
rejoice, O cathedral of the king. We may feel like we've been in darkness a long time, but it's time for the day spring. Not the gradual evolving and slowly getting better. The day spring. I got it out. Right? Is that a good thing? Okay. Close. Okay. You know what I mean. It's a quick light when he comes. God does a quick work when he does it. This is the hope that we have. This is the hope we walk in. It's the hope we've experienced in our salvation. Is that day spring to arise in our hearts and to shine forth in our lives. So together now with that hope in our hearts, let us claim to the heavenlies, to each other, and to the Lord, and the Apostle Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under conscious piety, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. O day spring from on high, Lord us in the armor of life, and awaken us to your salvation. Bring your light to those sitting in darkness and in the shadow of death. Bring your light to those in purposeless lives. Bring your light to those in leprosy. Bring your light to those in addiction. Bring your light to those in fear. Bring your light to those in self-centeredness. Bring your light to those in covetousness and jealousy. Bring your life to those in destructive relationship. Bring your life to those in deception. Bring your life to those who trust in man. Bring your life to those who serve man. Make us a light unto those in darkness around us and to this nation. As we will in our corporate relationship. Together, Almighty God and King, our dwelling place in all generations. Owner of the earth and all it contains, grant unto us our allotted inheritance, sweet grace, and grace to build upon facilities in which your people, being restored in your image and ever growing in love for you, might become a habitation of your presence and ministers of your life, to the glory of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns together with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And thine is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And in your spirit. Share his peace with the saints and your <laughs>
through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh. So fulfill the design you formed long ago and open for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels, archangels, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, martyrs, and the whole company of heaven in their unending hymn of praise. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Peace be. You are indeed holy, O Lord, fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he was given up to death. Death he freely accepted. He took bread. He gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Hey, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. This time, together let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Humbly we pray that the taking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love, together with our patriarch Fred, our Bishop Ariel, and all the clergy. Remember those for whom we now pray. Draw our hearts to remember the poor and broken. As we receive the body and blood of Jesus, may we be transformed to become the body of Christ to the world. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with all the saints. May we praise you in union with them. And give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Last are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you stand there under my roof, but only save the word, and my soul shall be saved. Gifts of God for the people of God. Take them, 
remembrance that Jesus died for you. You feed on him in your heart with thanksgiving.
day of the Advent hour. Remember, let the world, let those in the kingdom of darkness begin their day in dark and end their day in darkness. That's them. But for us, the sons of light, we always begin our days in light and end every day in light. Our days are enveloped in light because our days are enveloped in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of Righteousness. So remembering that, that the darkness is never forever. The darkness is never the end, but it's just something that's on the course and on the path towards the end of eternal life. Let's go for it. In the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be God. God. Amen. Let's go. 